Yeah, I joined the Air Force uh, when I turned 19. I guess I guess like machines and how things things work, cars, aeroplanes, what was what was under the skin. There was a lot of similarity there. The Mackie was a was a fairly simple trainer, but it, it just went very well. And to do aerobatics and things when you were 19 years of age in one of those was quite exciting. The Porsches that I've had certainly don't go as fast or accelerate as much. One day I was riding my bike down through Camberwell Junction in Melbourne and in the very front prominent showroom of the Volvo dealer was this car here. Bright red, shiny, chrome. And I went in and had a look and I thought it, it was magnificent. Ended up buying that car, selling the Volkswagen I had. This one in the showroom presents 30 years ago just as it is today, although I did paint it 20 years ago, in very sort of original condition. I'm David and this is my 356, the first Porsche. You know, the, the Porsche history, go, it's a family history and a family name, and Porsche started out as a design studio, and everything they designed, they gave a number to. They designed the VW Beetle, and uh, they wanted to make their own road car. So after the war, when they got re-established back in Stuttgart, and they started making three, three five sixes, and they expected to only make 500. From 19, about 1948, 49, to, they'd made 1,000, and the orders kept, kept, kept coming in were very light and reliable uh, on tyres and fuel. Only 1600cc, capable of 100 miles an hour. Fully synchromesh transmission, very easy, easy to drive. Air-cooled, just a unique shape. They were well engineered and, and very reliable. Nothing ever been come, come out quite like them. The Americans took them on to the racetracks and the little Porsches did extremely well. The first ones came to Australia at the end of 1951. By the end of the 50s, they had made 50,000. The 56 came up for sale 10 years ago. I thought, oh yeah, I wouldn't mind that as, as a project. I had a bit of spare time. I thought, oh, if I pull one to bits and start one from scratch, it's more of the learning part of it. There are lots of things I don't know about these things, simple as they are. When I bought it, it was just, just a rusty shell on wheels with a pile of parts that went in it. That Everything was piled inside the cabin. I initially looked at it and thought, no, that's too hard. But a couple of months later, I changed my mind and and bought it, pulled it apart. The engine needed rebuilding, the carburetors were missing, a lot of the throttle linkages, the tinware, the transmission was there, but it got rebuilt. It's got new components, new clutch, everything, everything was new. Either do it on the internet or eBay or swap meets or people I knew. It was gratifying to find rare and, and bits missing because I don't have to pay for time anymore. So you tend to potter around a lot more over a longer period of time and, and the good thing is you figure out how things work. Ten years later, it's just about finished, <laughs> but to, to my standard, not just any standard. I like to think I appreciate really, really fine craftsmanship. I see things really well made, timber, metal, to me they're just, just beautiful, really nice. There's a real skill to producing something like that. I've just tried to do that the best I can. The, the red car came along because that owner had been searching for that particular 1964 SC for a long time. And now I'm retired, I've, I've been able to sort of pull it apart and fix it for him. The ivory car belongs to a friend. Uh, the engine had some carburetor and ignition issues. And I said, well, bring it up to my place and uh, I'll see what happens. So we pulled the engine out and got it going on a stand eventually. And uh, that'll all go together next week or the week after. Its full name, it's, it's a McRae Spider. It's a replica of the Porsche 550 uh, Spider racing car, which Porsche raced very successfully in, in the mid 50s. They made about 100 of them. This one came up for sale in New Zealand about 15 or 16 years ago. And I imported it, got a register. You can't do that anymore. It was red and I had it for a couple of years and it had quite a few mechanical problems. One day I pulled it to bits and spent a year or two repainting and restoring it. So it's got the number 49 on it because at the Le Mans race in 1955, it, it won its class. These things would go for 24 hours, very light on fuel, light on tyres, no driver changes much and that's why they were so successful. I 
I don't plan on dispensing with them. It's sort of part of me and it's, it's, it's something that I do. If I didn't have them, I'd be gardening or something, I suppose.